Hi and welcome! Today it is time for another Creature from Folklore and this is a scary one for those who are easily scared or at least people were scared of this guy in the past. Today we're talking about the Draug. Uh, he's a sea creature you really don't want to meet. I won't be on camera that much today because well, my hair is wet and I need to read from a text that I wrote. So you won't see my face that much, but I will show you some other pictures. Among other things, a painting that I have hanging on my wall that was made by the fiancé of my husband's paternal grandmother. I think that's the right way around. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy the stories and that you'll enjoy the information about the drog. Let's get to it. The drog is a creature from Norwegian folklore, primarily in areas along the coast. Originally, it was a dead person, whether in a grave mound or venturing out to haunt the living. Later, it became common to limit this creature to the spirit of a sailor or a fisherman who died at sea and wasn't buried in hallowed ground. So what does Norwegian folklore say about the drogue? It's said that he wore an old fisherman's outfit, but had a clump of seaweed instead of a head. His skin looks like a mixture of fish scales and rotting flesh, and he has a huge mouth with razor-sharp teeth and tentacles for legs. So it's a lot harder to make cute pictures of this guy than, for example, the elves. Unlike ghosts, he has a physical body and he has superhuman strength. The drog also has many magical abilities. For example, that he can change his appearance, size, shape, control the weather, look into the future, and he can walk through stone as if it was air or water. This creature from Norwegian folklore is not someone you want to meet. He only has two interests. To guard his treasure under the sea and to drown helpless victims. So you definitely don't want to come across him. At sea, no one is safe from him, not even when they're asleep, because he has the ability to penetrate into the dreams of the living and always leaves a palpable memory of his visit. You can either see or hear the drog, and in both cases it's an omen of accident and death. He's always evil and dangerous. He foretold death for those who saw him, and he would even pull them under in some cases. He usually sails in half a boat with torn sails, but he can also come up on land and follow you. In some stories he wrestles with a human and will then pull him out to sea and drown him. If he's successful in taking a belonging of someone, like a mitten, it means that this person will sooner or later die at sea. His presence is also a sign of storms and bad weather, which often happen the next day. The signs can come as screams from the drug, the seriousness of the omen depending on how many times he screamed and how loud or gargling the screams are. Some also say that hearing him by the shore can mean that bones, clothing, wood or the boat of someone who drowned has come ashore there. If the drug calls welcome or calls the name of a particular person, don't respond. You should get up, turn your back to the sea, and shout out the same word. If you find bones, clothes, planks, and the like from a lost boat, close to where you hear dogs, make sure to get it across the floodplain and bury them. When they're buried, where seawater can't reach it, it will lose its attraction. If you're in possession of fire when you come across a drogue, throw the fire after it and shout, Debula, now you burn. Then it will go out to sea and only the blue tide will be left as a trace. If you're pursued by a drogue and you have a knife or a charged rifle with you, you should, during the flight and without having to turn around, throw the knife under your left arm with the tip first. When you believe that the knife tip hits the ghost, you'll be rid of it. 
When you go to look for the knife, you'll find it with an object attached to the tip. If you use a gun, you'll find an object pierced by the bullet. If you have to wrestle the drug, it's important to get him over the floodline. If you wrestle him until sunrise, he will disappear. A recorded legend from Trøndelag, the area I live in, tells how a cadaver lying on a beach became the object of a quarrel between the two types of drug, the headless and the seaweed-headed. A similar source even tells of a third type, the glape, known to hitch themselves to sailors walking ashore and make them slip on the wet rocks. Though the drug usually forewarns death, there is an amusing account in northern Norway of a northerner who managed to outwit him. It was Christmas Eve and Ulla went down to his boathouse to get the keg of liquor that he had bought for the holidays. When he got in, he noticed a drog sitting on the keg, starting out to sea. Ulla, with great presence of mind and great bravery, it might not be amiss to the state that he had already done some drinking, tiptoed up behind the drog and struck him sharply on the small of the back, so that he went flying out through the window with sparks hissing around him as he hit the water. Ulla knew he had no time to lose, so he set off at a great rate, running through the churchyard, which lay between his home and the boathouse. As he ran, he cried, Up, all you Christian souls, and help me. Then he heard the sound of fighting between the ghosts and the drog, who were battling each other with coffin boards and bunches of seaweed. The next morning, when people came to church, the whole yard was strewn with coffin covers, boat boards, and seaweed. After the fight, which the ghosts won, the drug never came back to that district. On a nicer note, the painting of a drug right here was done by my husband's paternal grandmother's fiancé. How's that for a relation? It hangs on her hallway wall with another of his paintings. In Norse mythology, a land drogue was something slightly different than a sea drogue. It was an undead, an animated corpse, which killed people, almost like a zombie. I hope you liked this summary of the drogue, and that you will check out the other videos in the series. You will find them in the playlist linked below and in the cards. I also left information about all the images in the description. Thank you for coming by today, thank you for watching. I really hope you liked this one and if you did please share it with your friends and remember to hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already please do so. I will be posting more of these stories, although it's not the only thing I do. Thanks again, I will see you next week, bye bye.